I greet you in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Welcome to another blessed week. You know, another opportunity for you and I to connect, to spend some time together, to share a word or two, to hear from God, to learn and to be better and just, you know, just bask in the glory and in the goodness of the Lord. How are you? How has your week been? How was your day or how has your day been? It's been a whole seven days and I have truly missed you. Did you miss me? <laughs> Welcome to the Lady Berlin show with myself, Lady Berlin, finding strength in your story. And this evening, I am absolutely excited because of the message that God has prepared for you and I is definitely a message that is going to enlighten us, is going to help us to understand that a lot of things, that life is actually spiritual. It will help us to be able to make sense of a lot of things a lot of doors that might be close to us it will help us to be able to understand why certain things don't work for us why you know it looks as if certain people were born with golden spoon in their mouth or certain people seem to be better off seem to have life so easy and then perhaps you everything is a struggle Today's message is going to open you up to understand a spiritual concept. And if you're able to understand and run with it, I trust God that your life would be better. And by the time this year ends, you'll be or you will find yourself in a much better space than you began the year. Before I start... With your permission, let's share a little prayer and then we can begin delve into the word of God for us tonight. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, this evening, tonight, we give you praise. Father, I give you thanks. I give you honor. I adore you and I absolutely magnify you for you are a good God you are a great God you are a faithful God there is none like you it's an absolute privilege to be sat at your feet this evening to serve your assignment like a student I sit under your feet to learn I sit under your feet in order for you to fill me up so that you can pour me out to your people. Lord Jesus, tonight let the blood speak in the mighty name of Jesus. Tonight I cover myself with the blood of Jesus so that I am not seen, I am not heard, but Christ will be seen and be heard through me. I'm only a vessel in your hands. There's nothing about me that is for the people and everything about you and that which you want to do in the lives of your people through the word that you have prepared for us. We are honored and we are humbled in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you for what you will do with the seed of your word in the lives of your people. I pray that you prepare our hearts so that the seed will fall on the good grounds of our hearts in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you, angels of the Most High God. I disperse you wherever people are, whoever must hear this evening's message. You know where they are. Locate them and bring them in so that by your spirit, you will minister to their needs in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you and I bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Okay. So I am going to be sharing with us a message that I have titled, The Power of Scent. 
And so I believe last week I was sharing with us, release me and let me go. And I made a statement from that message. And my attention was drawn to that statement through a conversation with a friend. And immediately my spirit picked it up and felt, wait, this is a message. Holy Spirit, there is something about this statement that you can communicate to your people and serve them, help us to be able to understand something. And so, we are looking at the power of saints. And before I delve into the message, I just want to, you know, throw a couple of premises here and there to begin to just trigger us. I want us to think. This evening, we're going to do a lot of thinking. So I want us to think a bit. You know, I want to kind of stir up <laughs> a bit of curiosity in you. So you can think along with me and you can flow with me. Okay. So I want to establish that scent is a spirit that follows you. And hopefully, by the time we finish today's message i believe it's going to be a series you know it's gonna take more than this week it will make sense why i've made that statement so scent is a spirit that follows you and scent is a garment that you put on you wear So scent is a spirit that follows an individual and scent is a garment that you put on, you wear. Earlier on today, I sent a WhatsApp broadcast regarding um, the message I'll be sharing with us. And, you know, I kind of triggered a couple of questions from that um, within that message. So one of the questions I want to ask you is, Usually when there's, you know, when there's a crime, maybe when someone, someone has gone missing or someone has died and, you know, the police are trying to find the body or the missing person. In some instances, what the police would do is they would take maybe an, um, a garment of the person, maybe their clothing. And then what would they do? They'll put it to the nose of the dog so that the dog can sniff in the smell, the scent of the person. And then the police, they will set off with the dog in hope that as they are tracking, the dog will smell its way through and hopefully lead them to wherever the body of this person might be or be able to you know trace it to wherever it is this person is right we see it you know if you watch uh, movies detective movies with any kind of detective crime and stuff you 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 see that another thing is have you ever found yourself in a situation where you've hugged someone and then the scent of the person Cleave so much to you that after you've left the presence of the person, you get home and you can still smell this person's scent on you. Sometimes the scent is so strong that even when you have washed your clothes, you still there's still a bit of residue of the scent on your clothes. Okay. I'm guilty here and I'm sure I'm not the only person that it has ever happened to. Have you ever <laughs> walked past someone's house and then they're cooking and the aroma from the food, the fragrance or the scent of the food, whatever food it is, <laughs> it just enters you. You just take it in and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, this hunger, <laughs> this hunger begins to brew in you. Prior to that, you were not hungry. 
you just took in the scent, the fragrance from a food, someone's food, and then suddenly you're hungry. So much so that sometimes the smell, the scent of that food, you can't determine what food it is from the scent. There are too many times I, I walk past and then I smell certain um, scents from food and I can actually tell that this is a Ghanaian. <laughs> Whoever is living in this house, this property must be Ghanaian because I can smell Ghanaian soup <laughs> without me seeing it. Yet I'm able to identify what kind of food it is just from the smell, the scent of the food. So I'm just throwing these examples all over the place because I want you to just start to think about it. Because it happens, you know, it's always happening in our space, in our reality, but maybe we're not consciously even aware of it. We've never really taken into thought some of these things. Why is it that sometimes when you have a baby in the house and then someone comes to visit maybe a friend maybe a family member a relative whatever they come to visit and the moment the person comes into the space and then maybe the person wants to carry the baby or anything the baby will cry cry and cry and cry until maybe the parent takes the baby from the 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 visitor the friend or whoever that person might be How come in some homes when you visit there and they have, you know, for example, a dog, the dog will come around you and the dog will begin to sniff. They begin to sniff you and based on the scent, the aura that oozes out of you, the dog is able to determine whether this person is a thief or not. Whether this person is a threat or not. Whether this person is a good person or not. What is it about a scent that is able to cause an animal to determine the kind of spirit an individual carries? And the last thing I want you to think about also is this. Have you walked past someone or has someone walked past you and the scent of the fragrance or the scent of their perfume is so warm, is so lovely, is so sweet that it actually causes you to stop the person and ask them, hmm, that's a very nice perfume. What are you wearing? And you know what? Today, I found quite interesting about this particular example. Usually, when we like the scent on somebody, when we like their perfume, we don't ask them, what perfume did you spray on? We ask them, what perfume are you wearing? What do you mean wearing? Is it a garment? What do you mean wearing? When I didn't wear it, I sprayed it on myself. So how come you're asking me what perfume am I wearing? What fragrance am I wearing? Who am I wearing? I sprayed it on. I didn't put it on as a cloth. But why is it that we normally will make the statement, what perfume are you wearing? What fragrance, what scent are you wearing rather than what fragrance or what perfume did you spray on? I'm going somewhere with this and I hope this is triggering you, right? Why do we make that statement? Have you ever even wondered? Does it actually think about it a bit? You know, let's stay there for a little bit. Think about it. Why do we automatically use the word where? When we want to find out someone's color, someone's perfume, 
Why do we use the word wear and not spray? Because that they spray it on. Hmm. Earlier on, I made a statement, a premise. I said that scent is a garment that we wear. Okay. Right. Okay. Have you met a stranger, someone for the first time, and yet within that short period of time even sometimes before you have interacted with the person you are able to determine that this person is a good person or this person is a bad person how do you know on what basis did you use to inform that decision that this is a good person you know, sometimes people will make the statement like, oh, this person has got a good spirit. How do you know? Did you see the spirit? What informed you to make that statement that somebody has a good spirit? You know, this person carries, this person carries a good, you know, aroma or aura. Aura. What did you see? Did you see something? No, because we don't. I've encountered people that even before I've spoken to them, I could tell that their aura, they carry a good aura. There have been so many times people have encountered me and they'll tell me, you got a good spirit. There's some, we usually, we, you know, we usually say, there's something about you. There's something about you. Whatever that thing is, whatever that something is, it draws them. They can't make sense of it. They're not able to articulate what it is. They're not able to put into words what it is because it's not something that is seen. So they're not seeing it, but for some reason, they just know that there is something about you what is that something what is it that draws you in so much sometimes it draws you in so much that you can't even you don't want to leave the presence you don't want to leave the person you find yourself one hour two hours three hours you are engaging this person and it doesn't make sense you cannot put your finger to what it is all you just all you know is just that there is something about this person that I have met and whatever this something is is good enough to keep me around the person the power of scent okay let's continue Let's look at what the definition of scent is. The dictionary says that scent is a distinctive order. Scent is a distinctive order or a distinctive smell. Distinctive. And the word distinctive there means a peculiar. It's a unique, it's a special, it's distinctive because from an individual scent, you can identify them. Have you not gone into a space and as you enter that space, you would ask, maybe you, you, you would ask, wait, did so, so, and so just leave the place or was so, so, and so here? You didn't meet so so and so however for some reason you seem to smell the scent of so so and so so you want you ask that question in order to confirm if what it is you're smelling the scent that was oozing out of that space is actually this so so and so person so that means that scent is unique to that person because if it's not unique 
then how are you able to identify people by their scent? So that means scent carries an identity. Ah, I didn't even write this down. I had this, I didn't have this in my notes. That just came. Scent carries an identity. And so anything that has an attracting mechanism has a scent. Anything that has an attracting mechanism, anything that attracts, anything that has the ability to attract, anything that has the power to attract, the reason why it's able to attract is because it carries within it scent. And it's this scent that draws or pulls on people and things, both physically and spiritually. And so I want us to look at scent from a physical perspective first. Do you know that by a person's scent, you can know where that person has been, what space, what atmosphere, what environment the person has been. And so, for example, last week I mentioned this, when you find if a person spends their time within the space where they're smoking, when that person leaves that space, guess what? The scent of that environment cleaves to the person, erupts itself on the person. The person takes it on and puts it on like a garment as they leave. Why do you say that, Lady Berlin? I'm saying that because even though you would have met this person not in the space, or not in the place that they were. Yet, wherever it is you met them, you are still able to know where they've been. So, your, your husband or your wife goes to the pub, hangs around there with some friends for some time, they make their way home. You weren't at the pub with them, your wife or your, you know, your husband may not have told you that I was hanging around with my friends in the pub. However, by the aura, the gum, the scent that they've put on, you're able to smell from them the pub. The scent that they exude can tell you or can help you to know where it is they're coming from. Why? Because the space or the environment that they spend time there has clothed them with the scent of that environment. Sheesh. You understand this a little bit better later on. My women, ladies, <laughs> how many times do your boyfriend, your partner, your husband come home and you ask them, babe, where have you been? And then they're trying to trip you, you know, they're trying to play smart with you because they probably know wherever it is they've been, they probably shouldn't have been there. And so they try to lie, but by the scent that is oozing out of them, you can immediately tell, yo, what you're telling me and what I'm smelling from you, the scent that is coming from you is not in alignment with what it is that is coming out of your mouth. And scent do not deceive, and I can tell by your scent that you're coming from this place. <laughs> and ladies are extremely good at this, extremely good at determining scent. Maybe because we operate more from our intuition. 
a lady, a woman, a wife can sit in their husband's car, a woman can sit in their partner's car and immediately start accusing them, whoa, what woman, what lady did you have in your car? How did she know? Because she hasn't seen anybody. The scent that is oozing out. The woman can determine from that scent that it's a female scent or it's a male scent. <laughs> oh, God. oh, Jesus, help us, Lord. A woman will query their husband when they get home from work or from wherever. When they hug them, a woman can query their husband after hugging them that what lady, what woman, who, what lady did you spend time with? What woman hugged you? Why? Because of the scent of that female person that has wrapped itself on you. And so you see sometimes <laughs> men that don't want to get any, into any trouble with their partners, with their ladies. When their female ladies are coming like, yo, don't hug me. Don't hug me. I don't want no trouble when I go home. <laughs> I don't want your perfume on me so that my wife will begin to accuse me of something that I haven't done. Let's shake hands. <laughs> scent and the reason why I'm talking about physical scent is because it's easier for us to relate so if it can make sense to us physically then when we shift it to the spiritual it will make even further sense I want us to understand this physical thing scent, scent this perfume that we put on these things that we do physically how it also applies spiritually that life is more spiritual than physical when someone walks past you and they have a good scent it seems to create this, you know, it gives you this kind of good feel factor. You know, it, it, it creates for just that short moment. It just, you know, it makes you feel a bit, it creates a bit of sweetness, you know, lovely, warm, just, you know, atmosphere or feeling this good, you know, it's a good feeling for that short period of time. There are times I've passed or someone has passed me, I've passed, I've met them and the, the scent of their fragrance, their perfume is so endearing. You know, you just kind of take it in you're like, oh wow, that's a, that's a very lovely smell. That smells so beautiful. And then for a moment there, you're just caught into that scent. And then you also have, <laughs> when you find yourself stuck in the rush hour, and you find yourself on a packed train, and unfortunately for you, if you had someone around you that carried a bad scent, a bad odor, you start, <laughs> you start getting angry. Sometimes it can be so bad that you get off, you change location, you change place, you move from your location and try to find somewhere else, or you even get off. Has someone not passed by you and they smell so bad that even though you are in a good mood, 
the stench, the scent that they carried immediately put you in a bad mood. You are so annoyed and you're like, you're wondering how can someone smell that bad? Like, <laughs> they are able to shift your mood from one state to another state just by the scent that they carry. So I want to ask him, <laughs> why do you bath? Why do you take your shower every day? Some once, some twice. When you come back from work, why do you bath? When you're sweating, why do you bath? When you go for a walk, you know, a workout, why do you come home and bath? I believe that, you know, at least I can draw two reasons why we bath one we bath in order for us to remove any dirt from our bodies maybe you know dirt from going from being outside and then we also bath we take a shower in order to remove any bad scent from us and this could be maybe sweat maybe you know just interacting mingling mixing with people you know taking on the smell of other people you come over and you bath so we bath in order to remove dirt to wash ourselves to cleanse ourselves of dirt and bad scent so i remember growing up I know I love the the boys. Look, I don't, what is it about boys that they don't like bathing? <laughs> and yet they sweat the most. They play the most, but they don't like bathing. And so sometimes they'll get they'll get into the bathroom and less than a minute they finish showering. You know, they just pour the water, or sometimes they'll wet their hair. Oh, uh, you know, at most, pour the water on, on themselves and they'll come out. I had a shower. And then mommy will be like, you just finished bathing. Are you sure you bath? Did you bath properly? Yes, mommy, I bath very well. Okay, come. Come. And then what would they do? <laughs> they'll say, okay, lift your arm. And then what would mommy do? Mommy will smell under your underarm. Why would they smell your underarm? Because... If you bathed properly, the act of bathing should be able to remove off you any bad scent. And so based on the scent that is coming from your underarm will help inform mommy whether you bathed properly or you didn't. And if mommy doesn't like the smell that's coming out, then mommy can tell that no, you didn't bath properly. And mommy will usher you right back into the bathroom to bath again. <laughs> and so bathing is literally a physical process that's supposed to alter a person's scent. So if you work in the mechanic, or if you work at the mechanic, if you work in a space where, you know, it has quite a high stink, scent, when you come home, the first thing you want to do, you bath. So that what? By bathing, that process is able to change your scent. Change the scent of the previous environment and give you a new scent and so i want us to turn our bibles to the book of genesis chapter 27 and we're going to look at 26 and 27 and i'm going to read from both the new american standard and also the niv Genesis chapter 27, verse 26 to 27. The, N, um, the New American Standard says, 
Then his father Isaac said to him, Please come close and kiss me, my son. So he came close and kissed him. And when he smelled the smell of his garment, he blessed him and said, See, the smell of my son is like the smell of a field which the Lord has blessed. And then when you look at it from the NIV, it says, then his father Isaac said to him, come here, my son, and kiss me. So he went to him and kissed him. When Isaac caught the smell of his clothes, he blessed him and said, ah, the smell of my son is like the smell of a field that the Lord has blessed. But if we would backtrack, so this is the story of Jacob and Esau and Jacob, you know, attempt to rob Esau of his birthright as the first son. So when you backtrack to Genesis chapter 27, verse 4, the Bible says, Then Isaac, Isaac called Esau and Isaac said to Esau, prepare me the kind of tasty food I like and bring it to me to eat so that I may give you my blessing before I die. Prepare me food. And after you've prepared me the food and I've eaten, I'll release a fatherly blessing on you before I die. And when you jump to verse 22, the Bible says that Jacob went close to his father Isaac, who touched him and said, The voice is the voice of Jacob, but the hands are the hands of Esau. The voice is like the voice of Jacob, but the hands are like the hands of Esau. And then when you look at verse 24, Isaac asks again, are you really my son Esau? He asked. I am, he replied. Isaac had said to Esau, go and prepare me. Go to the field. Get me some meat. Get me, you know, get some groceries, whatever. Come, come and prepare my favorite food. And after you've prepared that food and I've eaten it, then I will bless you. Their mother had the conversation. Had what? The father had said to Esau, and so the mother, who loved Jacob more, decided to help Jacob to trick their father in order for the, the blessing of the first son to come to Jacob. Okay, so J um, Isaac had finished eating. Isaac had felt... Jacob, the food, he was surprised how Jacob was able or Esau was able to quickly identify what his favorite food was. He ate it. He had felt his arms because Esau, Bible makes us to understand that Esau was a hairy person. And so by feeling him, he could, he could tell, you know, he had a, a little sense of hmm, maybe Esau. But there was something that was causing him to doubt. He said, the voice, the voice that I'm hearing, even though I felt the arms and the arms feels like Esau. Yes, it was Esau I instructed to cook my favorite food for me, not Jacob. So based on the food, it might be Esau. Based on the arms, it might be Esau. But there is something that doesn't sit right with me. The voice. 
does not sound like Esau. The voice sounds like Jacob. And so in order for um, Isaac to establish the confusion, he says, come son. In order for him to clear the doubt, because everything is saying one thing, but then I'm still not convinced. So in order for him to be convinced, he says, come, are you still my son Esau? If you are come, come give me a kiss. And as he did that, he smelled. So he took in Jacob's scent. But because the mother knew, so what did the mother do? The mother made Jacob put on the scent of Esau. And after Isaac, their father had smelled him, now he was convinced that it was Esau. Even though there was something that was making him doubt, the food did not convince him it was um, Esau. The hairy arms did not convince him it was Esau. But the scent is what convinced him that this was Esau. And so the father released the blessing upon him. How is it that by Jacob wearing the scent of Esau, a physical act was able to change the course of Esau's destiny. The power of scent. By someone's scent, someone's destiny or position was swapped. And so I want to ask you, if Jacob was able to wear, to put on the scent of his own brother Esau and use that to trick their father in order to take from, rob Esau from that which belonged to him. And this is blood, twins, blood sibling. If Jacob was able to do that to his own blood, twin brother how much more you and i who do we have in our space that by virtue of them being in our space long enough they've been able to now put on where the garment of our scent so that that which we are supposed to attract they are now attracting those things have you not found yourself or have you not never experienced where you have friends that come to you, particular friends that come to you and they spend time with you, you know, they cling so tightly to you, they become almost like your shadow, you know, for a period of time and then after they've left you, it's like everything that you wanted to do, you're not able to do and then suddenly they seem to be able to do, you know, suddenly you find them doing some of the things that you were planning to do. Have you not experienced where you have friends, people that come around you, a friend that come around you, that spend so much time with you, quote, quote, you know, you're right or die. But for some reason, anytime this person is around you, any good thing that must come to you, you never get it. Any open door that you must you go through, it doesn't happen. Any opportunity that's supposed to come to you, it doesn't happen. All of a sudden, it seems like the only thing that you are attracting are just bad misfortunes. But they seem to be attracting all the fortunes. <laughs> when we understand, when you and I understand that environment can swap sense you would take particular attention to the environment that you spend your time in 
to the people that you surround yourself with. Because if I have a perfume on, right? If I have even a strong scent, fragrance, perfume on, and I go into a space where there's smoke, maybe burning, by time, even though I didn't stay there long enough, but literally just walking past the smoke, the scent from the smoke, it's able to cleave to me so much so that my nice perfume disappears and takes on the scent of the smoke. Mm. How is it that you dress nicely, you perfume yourself, you know, beautiful scent is oozing out. And you find yourself in an environment where it doesn't smell so good. And it wasn't your perfume that affected the environment so much so that when you've left the space, you're still carrying your scent. However, look at this. That environment takes on your scent and then it gives you its scent. So, you dress, you've sprayed yourself, you know, you put on a lovely, you're wearing a lovely colon, you go to the pub, and you meet your friends. You hang out there, you leave, and by the time you come home, anyone that goes to the pub can smell your perfume, your colon, that you had on. But you leave the pub, and you carry the smell of all the alcohol, and the smoking, and everything. So our scents can be exchanged by the environment or the space or the people we have around us. Have you not hung around with some people And because of what it is, whatever it is that they do, even though you don't do that, but by hanging in their space, in their circle, automatically people assume that you do the same thing that they do. And then people label you or people treat you in a certain way because they made a conclusion based on some years back i think um i had a job interview or something the guy called me on the phone is this you know so so and so here he looks at my resume and everything and then he looked at the university i attended and it was greenwich university and the person this guy just said oh greenwich Oh, Greenwich, what did you get? You must have gotten a 2-2. Why? Because in his mind, anybody coming from the University of Greenwich cannot attain any higher grade than the 2-2. And so what has he done? He has put me in the bundle. So I said to him, no, I'm sorry. I didn't get 2-2. I got 2-1. Like, oh, Really? How is it that even in London here, there are certain areas, certain vicinity that when you go there or when you live there, sometimes you're even, you know, you're even shy to let people know that you live there. Why? It's because of the scent. There's a scent. They said to Jesus, and the final Jesus was from Nazareth. What did, they, what did they say? Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Some of you, because of the family that you're coming from, the school you attended, the smell, there's a smell that 
you carry. And by that smell, it can cause doors to be open to you or doors to be shut to you. Scent. The environment that we spend our time in, the space, the people, the scent from that environment, whether you and I like it or not, we will live, we will leave that space wearing on, wearing, putting on the scent. And so you and I better make sure that that scent is a good scent. You and I better make sure that person is carrying a good scent. Because there are some people that carry great scent that when you go around them, automatically you begin to attract favor. You begin to attract goodness. And then there are some people you hear. Guys, say it. There are some women when you cleave yourself, yourself to... Oh, you start to experience his bad luck, misfortune. Why is that? It's because of the scent that they carry. By cause of that scent, the more time you're spending with them, their scent is rubbing on you. And as their scent rubs on you, guess what? Like I said earlier on, scent, there's a mechanism that attracts and so that scent would attract and you better make sure that scent is a good scent that will attract goodness to you there are people that have had opportunities to have attended interviews you know job opening opportunities but because of their scent, when they got into that space, the door was shut. There are some scents when you take it in, immediately you get angry. Immediately, you, you, you feel like you want to throw up. Scent. <laughs> And so, let's be careful who it is that we allow into our space and also whose space we hang in, around or we enter, we go into. Because scent rubs on each other, scent rubs on, scent attracts, scent cleaves, scent is a garment that you wear. Either by choice or not. Either way, you are wearing it. Scent invokes spirit. Hmm. That's the reason why when you go to example catholic church before they begin before the priest as the priest is coming in you have the altar boys or the mass boys they have what incense and they're burning the incense and as you know they're moving their hands here and about and all that the smell the scent of the incense begins to fill the atmosphere why are they doing that in order for the atmosphere to change the scent that is oozing out of that atmosphere to change. The Bible says, and I'm not, I, I didn't even want to go there yet. That God will give us a garment of praise. I told you that scent is a garment. So even the Bible saying we will receive a, um, a garment of praise, that means that praise is a scent. That you wear. <laughs> Scent provokes a reaction. 
if someone's lovely smell, scent, can make you feel happy, can make you feel good. It's the same way when someone's bad scent passes you by. <laughs> it provokes a reaction. You get angry. You get annoyed. You want to leave that space. If it's a confined space, you want to get out as quickly as possible. So scent invokes spirit. There are certain scents. That's why, you know, people burn, you know, certain leaves like sage. Why are they burning it? They are burning it in order to change the scent. So that the scent from the sage would attract specific spirits. When you go to, when we watch movies, people that go to these, you know, um, fetish and these places, every altar, there's some kind of burning of something. There's a smoke, there's a burning, and that burning, the scent from that burning changes the atmosphere in order for it to attract spirit. Scent pulls to the same way someone's good smell, good scent can pull you to the person and cause you to even interact and engage the person. So scent pulls to at the same time, scent pulls away when you don't carry the right scent, it pulls people away from you physically. Next week, we're gonna talk about the spiritually. Scent, when someone has a bad order, it pulls you away from the person. When someone comes to you, it doesn't matter how ni you know, nicely dressed they are put together. When they open their mouth and you know, they are suffering from halitosis, they have bad stains from their mouth. Guess what? Immediately, you want to find a nice way to just kind of, you know, turn your, head, your face away. You don't. At that moment, whatever the person is saying, guess what? Your, your mind is shut. You don't want to listen because you're, being, you're annoyed by the stings that is coming out, the scent that is coming out of their mouth. The power of scent. So I want to ask you and I, what scent are you wearing? And what is that scent attracting to you? What is that scent pulling to you? And what is that scent pulling away from you? The people that you have in your space, do you know what scent they carry? And whatever scent they carry, is it a scent that you want to be cleaved to? Is it a scent that you want to wear, put on? Is it a sense that you want to do the exchange? Because when you spend time in the same space, your scent rubs on them as their scent rubs on you. Perhaps you can guarantee your scent, but the other person, do you know what their scent is? For you to then know whether it's a scent that you want to put on. I will be back next week to continue this message on the power of scent. We are going to look at scent from a spiritual perspective and we are going to look at how scent affects us spiritually. How scent can block you from attracting the blessings attracting the things that are supposed to come to you we're going to look at how scent can cause doors to be open or shut to you we're going to look at how scent can be used to favor you we're going to look at how carrying the carrying the wrong scent affects you both physically and spiritually this evening we've been looking at scent from a physical perspective so that i started it off that way to, so that when we are able to understand that 
then when we look at it from a spiritual perspective, it will make even more sense to us. And I pray and trust that this evening's message has served you. You have learned a thing or two about scent, the power of scent. And if you have, share the message to someone. The more you share the message, the more other people are able to find, or the easier people are able to find the message so that they can also listen to it and learn. Take note and apply it to their life. Because we don't want to continue to live a life of victim, you know, being victimized. When God has got so many promises for us, there are some things prayer alone cannot do it. You know, if you, you can pray hours, if upon all those prayers and fasting, if the scent that you carry is the wrong scent, not even your prayers will open the door. Because when the door opens and you show up by your scent, that open door that your prayer or that the, the door that the prayer opened for you by your scent, that door will be shut. Do not miss this message. This is definitely not a message for us to, to miss. And I believe God wants to teach us something really important. We must understand some spiritual concept and know because once you have the key, you can open the door. If you don't have the key, even though the door might be before you, you can't enter. And this is one of those keys. So that whatever door God has set before us that we must enter in this season, in this year, by close of the year, we would go through that door. I want to thank you for your time. You have been listening to myself, Lady Berlin, on the Lady Berlin Show, Finding Strength in Your Story. God bless you. Have a blessed rest of the week and God willing, we will connect again by this same platform next week. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word, the power of scent. Father, I pray and I commit your people into your hands as you have taught us about this message on scent. Father, I pray by the help of your Holy Spirit that by the end of this message, Lord Jesus, that you will change the scent that we are carrying. If by our scent we are attracting the wrong things into our lives, if by our scent we are being robbed of that which belongs to us, that you will change our scent so that you can align us with purpose and destiny. Lord, I thank you. I commit the rest of our week into your hands. That will be a blessed one. In the name of Jesus. I honor you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I love you. And have a good night.